Hey friends, it's Angela and welcome back to my channel. For today's cookie decorating tutorial, I'm going to show you how easy it is to replicate a large design on a cookie without using a projector. So this cookie is based on a sculpture called the Spirit Catcher and the cookie itself is actually five and a half inches by seven inches and you can see all those nice details on it. So let's dive in and take a look at the process and you can see how it's made without using a projector. So whenever you're going to replicate a design on a cookie, you want to make sure that you print a picture of it that exactly matches the size of the cookie that you've baked. Next, I'm going to go ahead with some parchment paper and I'm going to use a pencil to trace it. And this is just basic tracing like you would have done in school. So it's nice to bring back some old techniques here. All I'm going to do now is go ahead and just copy everything from that picture onto my parchment paper using a pencil. Now if you're concerned about using a pencil on cookie, you could do this with an edible marker instead. But this cookie isn't going to be eaten so I'm not worried about it at all. This is just going to be for decorative purposes. So now that I've got that traced, I flipped it over as it's symmetrical, so that's letting me do that. And then I'm just gonna go over the other side so that it will actually emboss it onto my cookie for me. And again, you just wanna make sure you're doing everything to follow your design and press in nice and hard so that it will leave some of that pencil on your cookie. Okay, so we've got our basic design on there. The next thing I'm gonna do is just fill my piping bag. I'm using a PME tip one for this as well because it's lots of intricate line work. And I'm using just a basic royal icing with some black added to it. And I've just added enough so that it makes a nice dark gray instead of a full black here. You'll see I've put an elastic band on my piping bag and that's just to stop my icing coming out of the wrong end and it also helps put a little bit of extra pressure on your bag as well so that you're not actually having to squeeze as hard. When you do fill your bags, another tip for you is to make sure you don't fill them too full because that can actually cause a little bit more strain on your wrist as well, especially when you're doing something quite repetitive like line work. And now the process is really simple. I'm just going ahead and I'm starting to copy that design with my icing. And with this particular design, I wanna make sure that I do the layers in the correct order so that there's a little bit of definition to them because this is actually a sculpture and I wanna make sure it doesn't look completely flat. So some bits will overlay on top of the other. So first of all, I'm focusing on what are called the knives of the sculpture, and these actually hang on the crossbars that go on either side of the sculpture. So you'll see I'm going to do the knives first, and then I'll put those crossbars on afterwards. I'm doing the center as well, and when I'm filling everything in, because I'm using a hybrid consistency icing, I can just kind of jiggle it back and forth with my tip and adjust it with my scribe tool as well if I just want to make sure all those points are down and that the peaks at the end of the knives are actually sharp as well. So just working my way through this, it is a long process because there's lots of intricate pieces to add to this, but it is essentially line work. So if you're looking for lots of practice with line work, find a design that is similar to this, and it's a great way for you to practice your piping pressure and also the position of your bag as well. And when I'm piping in all of this, I'm not touching the surface of my cookie at all. My tip is always hovering just above the surface and that ensures that my icing flows out really cleanly as well. Now on occasion you'll notice that I scrape off some of my icing with one of my modeling tools. And that's just where the icing has broken a little where I've eased off my pressure by accident. Don't be afraid to do that. Your icing is not going to spoil your cookie at all when you're doing this on a blank cookie. If you are doing it on a flooded cookie, you would want to be a little bit more careful, but you can always correct your mistakes. So don't worry about them. Now I'm on the second side and you can see that I've already added that first crossbar on the left side and I'm going to do that to the second one shortly once I finish the last few knives off. And I will pop a link in the description for all of the tools that I'm using here. It's a basic scribe tool, a modeling tool and also a PME tip one as well. I chose the tip one because I know that the top of the knives needed to be fairly thin. Of course, you could do this with just a tipless bag as well, but I like to have precision when I'm doing straight lines like this and that guarantees I will always get them when I use a tip. 
So now I'm just adding that final crossbar and that will finish off our cookie. Okay, so that's how easy it is. It is quite a long process to do something this intricate, but I think you can see it's really possible to make something without having a projector. Let's take a look at how we did it again. So we used our tracing paper, and then because this is a symmetrical design, we flipped it, and then we transferred that onto our cookie. Let's have one last look at our cookie as well. And there you go, there's our Spirit Catcher cookie. Hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you're going to have a go at doing this as well for some more intricate cookies and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.